Hello and welcome back to Project Metalworks. If you've not been here before, I'm Chris Morton and in today's video I want to look at what do you do first when you're assigned or start a new project. So let's get straight into the video. So what should you do first? What, what is the first thing you do when you start a new project? Well, if you look on Google and you look at what does a project manager do first, there are lots of things. Organizational structure, writing a project management plan, looking at the risks, etc. However, I believe there are two things that you need to do before you get involved in that. But first, let's look at where does a project manager fit into the project? At what point does a project manager start the project? There are three points at which you can enter a project. Number one, you can enter at the concept stage with a blank sheet of paper. It's just an idea, a concept. Can we do this project? The second point of entry is after the concept or the idea has actually had some pre-work done, whether that be engineering, budgeting, schedule, and it has financial approval to progress. And you may be brought in at that point. The third one is at some stage during the project life. So maybe the project is halfway through, and for some reason, there has been some organisational structure reformatting or the project manager has left and gone to another project, whatever the reason, and you are brought in at that stage. So as I said, three points at which you can enter a project. There is one thing that you should do, whether or not you're entering at point one, two or three, and that is get yourself a day book. And what do I mean by a day book? Sounds rather obvious, but I've met a lot of people that don't keep a day book. I've always kept a day book when managing a project. And the reason for this is that I can then look back. It's my personal historical data book. And I format a page for each day. I made, made the format on the computer. I printed one off duplicate it and then I stick it in my day book. So my day book looks like this. So I have a normal page here and then I have a pre-formatted page here which tells me certain things. These things are things like the top three things that I want to do today. Who do I want to phone today? Do I need to send any emails today? Do I have questions for certain people today? What are things I'd like to do today if I had time? And I fill out my day book. And then I do it in one colour. I fill it out in blue. And when I've done it, or I've completed the task, made the phone call, sent the email, met the person, I then write done next to it, or I just put a tick. And this is a very simple mechanism, but to me it's invaluable. And I really think that you should take time to do this and you do it every day. That's why I call it a day book. Because even when you're not at work and you're on holiday, you still do this. And if you don't do anything on that day, just scroll across it, all right, on holiday, nothing done. Then six, seven, eight months, maybe one year into the project, there is an issue or there is a dispute or there is a question about something that's not quite right. You can go back into your day book to the area that you're looking and go through what you did. And is there any information in this book, whether it tells you there was an email, whether you made a phone call, whether you had a meeting, it's in 
your book. And it's light, it's simple, it doesn't run out of batteries, it doesn't need an internet connection. And to get the pen and the book, you know, $20, depending on the thickness of the book, it'll last you as good as, you know, as, good as a year, maybe longer. <coughs> Excuse me. The reason I don't use a diary is simply because if I start a project in July, then half the diary is empty and will remain empty. But never miss a day. It's nothing worse than having a question and then you go back and you think, I don't have that day. Maybe I did something on that day. Maybe I didn't do anything on that day. If every day is in your day book, whether it's full or empty, you will know whether you did something on that day. The other thing that I just like to do is stick my business card on the front. And this is my historical data book, my day book. I live by this. To me, it's critical in project management. And it's the first thing you do when you start a new project. Now, the second thing that you do is, depending on the point that you start the project, for example, if you start at concept stage, then you will understand everything that happens on the project as it progresses. However, if you enter at point financial approval and some pre-work has been done, or if you enter partway through the project, then the second thing you do is you take all the information to the point of your entry as project manager and you digest it. Take time, read any document that you have pertaining to the project. Read the history leading up to the point of your arrival. Understand what the project is. Yeah, if you're building a bridge, if you're building an oilery, that's the easy bit. You know what you're doing, but look at how they intend to do it before you arrive. Look at the schedule they may have. Look at the budget that they may have. And go through it. Do you agree with it? Do you think it's fair and reasonable? Do they have the documents that you would expect at that point in time? And then go into your day book and write down any questions that you may have. Anybody that you think you need to speak to? Do you want to have a meeting about certain things? Put it in the day book. But learn the information digest the information, understand the project to the point of where it is, and what is the proposal going forward? You can only make decisions on any project when you understand the project. And if you enter the project at a point partway through, after financial decisions, so in number three, if you enter the project and the project is rolling, then one thing I have learned, and I learned this way back when I was captain of ships, and it's part of the rule of the road for ships, is that you never make any decisions on scanty information. That is to say that if you enter a project halfway through, there'll be things happening and it will be rolling. So you digest as much information as you can and you learn about the project to that point. Then you must probably take some meetings with the people that are involved in the project, get to know the project team members and listen to what they have to say. You have most probably been given a brief by senior management prior to you arriving on the project. Don't disregard what you've been told either by senior management or by the people in the project management team. But do not make your initial decisions based on that information. The information that you should use is the historical data that you have from the project. Listening to what management believe they need to be done with the project and 
What does the project management team members tell you? Then take all this information and digest it and look at it and form your own conclusions. Then once you've formed your own conclusions, have more meetings, have more communication with senior management, with the project team members, and then make the decision on what you think should happen. Obviously this wouldn't be in the first part because you would be doing it from the concept as you roll through the project. So hopefully that's the best place to enter a project, but it's not always the case. I think out of the eight or nine big projects that I've done, only two was I involved in the initial stage. And normally I would enter when financial approval has been given and the project has got a green light. So then what you just have to quickly do is learn what has gone on prior to your arrival and write the questions that you have in your day book. Then when you go into the office or you go to location, depending on what the project, where the project is, ask the questions. The more questions you ask, the better understanding you have and ask the correct people. So if you have a question on the schedule, go to the project controls manager or get the project controls manager in and speak to him, her and the planner. Or if you have two planners and get feedback on the questions that you have about the schedule. So what I'm saying is there are two key things. One, the day book. To me, fundamental simple. The second one is learn the project, understand the project. That's either by reading or communicating with the people in the project that are there depending on when you arrive. And do not make any decisions to change anything, no matter how much pressure you're under. Better to make a decision based on fact and historical data than to make a decision on hearsay, on what people think. You're there to make the decision based on the information that you have, based on the information that you're given. Every person's different. Everybody will have an opinion. Try and figure out what is the best decision and discuss it before you take it with your project team. You may have a decision in here that you think you should make. Sound it out before you make it. You may have missed something. You may have, because you're new, you may have misread something or you may have not had a document that you thought should have been there and it was, but you didn't have it. So don't make any rash decisions. Always make your decisions on fact. I say again, do not make any decisions on scanty information. It's dangerous. It doesn't work. I will just make things worse. So, take a step back, make sure that you get all the information that you need, digest it, read it, read it once, read it twice, read it three times, and then get some questions. Then, meet the people in the project if the project's running, and Get their viewpoint. Get everybody's viewpoint. Secretary, all the way up to the commission manager, the contracts manager, control specialist. Get the information you need. Then sit back again, place it against the historical data that you have, and get some more questions. Then have more meetings. Put your ideas across. See what response your ideas get goes back to the metal effect. Monitor, control, and mitigate. And it's the same whether it's a personal project or whether it's an organizational project. I hope this video contained information that was useful to you. And the videos that we will do in the future will delve more into detail regarding project management. But I do think things like a daybook, 
not making decisions on information which is incorrect are important. They are fundamental. Monitor, control and mitigate. The word metal is key. So in the two videos that we did previously, you can get the PDF of the metal effect for personal and for project. And for the daybook template, you can get that from the description box on this video. If you like the content, then click the thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you want to receive more details on project management. And if you have a comment, please leave it in the comment section below and email me or leave it in the comment section below if you wish me to do a video or give you information on a different topic. If it's a topic I can do, I will endeavor to do a video and go through it in as much detail as possible. So I hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to doing the next one for next week. So you take care and bye for now.